Hey team, is Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. Today we're doing a live review of the new part two changes to submarines. They just recently uh, um, put on their website and the YouTube video. So let's take a look at it and we'll kind of comment as we go along and, and see if actually are these actually good things or bad things. And I'm hearing a lot of gripes online right now. And uh, man, uh, let's take a look at it when it speaks for itself. Empty the ballast tanks, Captain. It's time to learn about all the new features and changes to submarines introduced in Update 13.2. Let's review it all step by step. All submarine torpedoes will now deal reduced damage within the first few kilometers after launch. Any hits that occur at a distance of 2.9 kilometers or less will inflict only 10% of the maximum damage. And from 2.9 to 3 kilometers, the torpedo firepower will gradually increase back to 100%. This will help prevent situations in which a one meter difference would mean drastically different damage outcomes. Okay, so take a, you just take a look at that right there. So on the left, you could see 2.9 didn't do much, but at just 0.1 more at three kilometers, they say they gradually, or is it instantaneously? I'm not sure, but look, the, the end result is Kablawi. Um, a submarine just has to basically go in reverse. I'll, I think some of the questions are, what if I shoot it at you know three? 3.1 kilometers out, but I'm driving into a ship and the distance is is reduced. Uh, I don't think that matters. I think it's when the torpedo is launched at that distance, what at the time was registered in RNG where it says the torpedo was launched at three kilometers, you will do maximum damage. And the submarine's position, I don't think has anything to do with um, the, the mechanics of the torpedoes. I'm assuming that's how they program it. Again, that could be a glitch. I don't know if this really is going to solve much because what's going to happen now. The submarine players are just going to be a little bit more standoff and you're going to still torpedo. The term tor or shotgunning will just mean you got a longer range shotgun. I'm just going to shoot you at three kilometers and good torpedo players can do that. If you can shotgun at 2.9, you could shotgun a 3.0. So I don't know. I don't think this is really not really much to that adds any value to anybody else outside of submarine players, maybe. Due to the infliction of minimal damage at point-blank ranges, arming distance for alternative torpedoes will be reduced to 400 meters. Simil okay, so the, first of all, they're addressing that there is a problem. I mean, that, that is the key line, and they're still trying to run with it. Okay, look, listen, Wargaming, you just admitted there is a problem just by releasing all these videos, okay? Stop doing it. Uh, if you want to bring back the player base, you want to eliminate all gripes and complaints altogether, then eliminate submarines from randoms or clan battles or ranked or whatever and let them have their own mode because then you don't even have to deal with all of this because, like I said, at the beginning, people have talked about it. Submarines are not going to be added to the game. They add no value to the game to a surface-based warfare game. Again, it's like you introducing an a A-10 into a tank game, like war World War Tanks. You introduce somebody with a, the ability to take an A-10 and just start strafing everybody. Makes no sense. This is kind of a similar idea. Submarines were designed to be anti-surface ship warfare. Hence, that's why they call it ASW, anti-submarine warfare. Well, the submarines are, again, in essence, anti-ship warfare. This 400-meter thing, the arming distance, which means that, it, that if I shoot the torpedo within 0.4 uh, distance of a ship, okay, that promotes me to drive over the, the submarine. But again, as a destroyer player, I have to drive literally over a ship in order to destroy it with my depth charges. Makes no sense because in a battleship, do you drive over a target to try to eliminate? No, it's a, it's a surface warfare ship game. What this is mechanic is saying is, okay, if I'm within 0.4 kilometers, which is 400 meters, uh, the torpedoes won't arm. After 400, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5 kilometers, the torpedoes in arm and in bloom, they can still destroy me, or, or I'm sorry, they still can hurt me, but according to them, they said it only does 10% damage. So you're eliminating basically everybody driving over top of the submarine because the submarine's literally just going to be more standoffish, I think. This is what this is going to cause. Again, World of War Gaming trying to make the game more fun by having people stand off and stay away from each other. Similar to homing torpedoes. These changes will make it significantly harder to execute shotgun attacks and simultaneously encourage surf. Okay, did you just hear what he said? It would discourage shotgunning attacks. The fact that they are even saying that it's still in the game is because they just addressed it right. It's to reduce it. Didn't say eliminate it. It's to reduce it. The ships to use depth charges in close combat. We've improved the sonar ping indicator. Now the indicator will show players an approximate direction of travel of the submarine at the time of pinging. 
Serious changes have also been implemented in the mechanics of underwater terrain visibility. Okay, so that's a good thing. I think that the fact that they added the pinging, uh, first of all, pings are they're stupid in the first place. I mean, homing torpedoes, seriously, and number two is pings. Every time I get pinged by a, a submarine, I say I psycho damage con and did remove it. My one ability to remove a ping from me, uh, which is a, that lock you see right here on the screen right here, that is a lock on the ship. All I can do is hit the damage con button, and then it goes away, but then he can ping me right off the bat and again. I mean, the, the ping reloads fairly quickly, while the damage con reloads every 40-something seconds or 70 seconds to some people. Not fair at all. That is a, a totally broken system. They should fix that. Eliminate pings altogether. It's not even fair. Previously, a submarine had to enter binocular view or use hydrophone to clearly see the underwater terrain with the help of a sonic wave. Now, due to the fact that previous changes have significantly reduced the hydrophone action time, sonic wave activation will be freely available. To use it while submerged, you have to press the N key that activates the ship horn. Okay, basically a ship horn just to kind of ping the area to see the terrain. Okay, I thought this is a surface warfare game. I I'm starting to see Wargaming. You're trying to advertise this as an underwater warfare game as opposed to a surface warfare game, which was intended to be. That was what the game started out as. Using this feature will allow you to better assess your surroundings when playing submarines. The collision warning has also been improved. As there was no guaranteed detection of other submarines while underwater, submarines sometimes collided when submerging. Update 13.2 delivers an improved collision warning to the game with new sound and visual effects. Cool. I don't know why they're adding this in. So submarines collide with each other. So what? Ships can collide with each other all the time. Why are you eliminating the ability for a submarine to collide uh, as opposed to a ship to collide? I mean, ships collide all the time. You don't give us uh, any kind of, oh, hey, you're about to you know, get, get away from them. No. I mean, I never get a collision alert <laughs> when I'm about to run into somebody. But why do submarines get extra privilege and, uh, you know, participation points? As part of the improvements and overhaul of submarine mechanics, a few changes have also been implemented for submarine upgrades. Submarine Steering Gears Modification 3 will be removed from the game. Damage Control System Modification 1 and Torpedo Lookout System will be removed for submarines, but they will be available as an option for other ship types. Sonar Modification 2 will be transferred from Slot 3 to Slot 2. All players will receive a global 100% discount on demounting upgrades for a week after the release of Update 13.2. Submarine Steering Gears Modification 2 is being renamed Submarine Steering Gears, and its parameters will be changed. New upgrades will also be added for submarines. Damage Control System Modification 3 in Slot 2, Torpedo Tubes Modification 3 in Slot 5, and Reinforced Bulkheads also in Slot 5. Additionally, we've included two special upgrades for Reserve Battery Unit. Reserve Battery Unit Modification 1 in the second slot, Submarine Surveillance. Submarine Surveillance Modification 1 in the third slot. The latter upgrade will also be available for surface ships that have access to this consumable. Now let's move on to balance changes. Oh, this should be good. Balance changes. That's, so they're going to balance the game with submarines. Let's see how we do it. When addressing issues with submarines, one of our goals is to maintain the same level of interaction effectiveness for all ship types. Balance changes have been applied to all standard torpedoes and to the acoustic torpedoes of the researchable British submarines. The damage of alternative torpedoes has been increased by 15% and that of acoustic torpedoes by 5%. Wait, wait, wait. You're going to increase the damage? I didn't hear anything about balance. So to balance the game, you're going to increase the damage. Hmm. The range of the alternative torpedoes found on the German tech tree line has also been increased. All of this is aimed... Okay, so you're going to increase the range now, Torpedo, because you just increased the range of arming distances, or decreased arming distances, or increased it, and then also increased to three kilometers for shotgunning, so, okay. At ...making the interactions between different ship types more transparent and easy to understand. We'll continue to implement changes in the game in the next updates as well. You can find all the specific detail, including the compensation rules, in a dedicated article on our website. Take a moment to explore everything thoroughly. All right, let's take a look at their website. All right, so I'm not really impressed, and I think a lot of the internet has been uh, blowing up over this as well. About I don't know if this is really a good thing. Uh, it seems like it just kind of buffed the submarines and just pushed them out further instead of shotgunning at 2.9. Let's shotgun at 3. Okay. All right, let's take a look at a submarine chambers new torpedo feature. So we talked about it. It says that 
Okay, all submarine torpedoes will now deal reduced damage within the first few kilometers they travel. Up to 2.9 kilometers, they will only deal 10% damage. While from 2.9, so the, the, from the distance between 0.9 to 3, their damage will scale up to 100%. This scaling will prevent scenarios when a single meter could be result in drastically different damage. So if like point, point 0.95, uh, it probably goes up 50%, right? So something around there. And then after, at the 3, it's 100% regu regular damage. Due to the minimal changes, they can now inflict point and wait now due to the minimum damage they can now inflict at point blank ranges the arming distance for submarine alternative torpedoes will be reduced to 400 like acoustic humming torpedoes they will serve to make close range shotgun attacks harder it didn't say eliminate it is harder to execute while simultaneously allowing players to do depth charges more safely in close combat engagement so you can't shotgun basically less than 2.9 you can't shotgun anyway so it doesn't matter so i have to literally drive over top which is zero kilometers driving over a top of a, a set. okay i have to drive still 2.9 remember submarines can still go 30 to 35 maybe 40 knots underwater for some reason and then dive have a un unlimited smoke screen so i don't understand you didn't give the destroyer player any kind of ability to hunt a submarine other than even the hydroacoustic that at deep water I can only get it to two. It means I got to drive over him and then get spotted potentially or expose myself. So I don't understand how this is balancing honestly because you're not giving the destroyer player and maybe some other players the ability to counter submarines. Other than the cruiser and the battleship are the only people that can drop things. And now with the introduction of the new Commonwealth cruisers, I actually enjoy that the fact that you have a Commonwealth cruiser that has ra submarine radar. That can literally now spot uh, submarines out to eight, I believe, and then drop three loads of AS ASW. So they can do depth charges from uh, three rounds of depth charges from the Commonwealth. That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, we already talked about this damaging effect. Underwater train visibility. Whoop de doo. Who cares? I don't play submarines. They can ping the sonar ability to see train. Yay, see train. This is a surface warfare game. When a submarine emits a sonar ping, the water now shows the improved dire the improved direction. It gives the approximate direction of travel if the, the submarine time of pinging. So if he's going that way, it's showing. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm shooting now at a thing underwater with nothing as a destroyer player. So the ping really is only good for uh, cruisers and, and battleships who are not shooting at or preoccupied with somebody else. They have to actually find this ping indicator to then, if they had the depth charges off cooldown, to then drop something, and he could turn left and right anyways, right? So let's say the indicator's there. He could go left and right, and that you're still taking a, a total shot in the dark. I don't know. Improved submarine proximity alert. Uh, okay, I don't know. Again, why are you adding this to say, hey, uh, somebody's close to here. Be careful, be careful. Don't hit somebody. Um, I don't get that when I'm running into a, uh, a ship. I mean, you hit him, you hit him. So what? Just use common sense to turn away. Uh, submarine upgrade. We talked about they're just removing things. Rudder shift times, down planning, special upgrade. Okay, who cares about that? Submarine balance changes. Uh, balance changes apply to alternative torpedoes and, and acoustic homing torpedoes of the British submarine Tech Tree. The damage of alternative torpedoes has been increased by 15%. Why are you even increasing it? Well, was there a problem of destroying ships before? Or Okay. Damage of acoustic homing torpedoes has been increased by 5% for the British line as well. So there's alternative torpedoes, and then there's acoustic. So, okay. Interesting. The range of alternative torpedoes found on the German tech tree line, in, uh, outside use of a close to, wait, tech tree, has been increased. So the range has been increased to allow for their use outside of close range engagements. Okay. Stock alternative. So here it is right here. Tier 8, range 5.7. So it's at a 5. You go to 7, and you're going to restart tournament. So 6, so 7.5. So you can shoot at 7.5. So alternative, you go to 7.5 and, and go to 8. Okay, so more damage, longer ranges. Okay. Uh, okay. What do I think about this? Um, I don't see anything that adds value to, honestly, cruisers, battleship players, and destroyer players. It seems like this just improves submarines. This shotgunning thing, it's still shotgunning. You still can do it, right? It just proved it right here at three kilometers. You can still shotgun the crap out of them. Uh, me as a destroyer player, I'm not getting within three kilometers of anybody. I mean, uh, it's just suicide for me. For submarines, it feels like it's fun, I guess. Because you can always hit the cool, the, the awesome uh, 
automatic, what is it, world cloud button, which is called diving. When you dive, you have an automatic smoke screen, which is called water. Water engulfs you, and you can't see the th damn thing anyways. Very difficult to uh, counter submarines. Just remove them from the game, honestly, or put them in a separate mode. Just just remove them from random battles. Remove it from ranked. Remove it from clan. It, they add no value. They add no um, ability. That's why you, d you don't add them in clan battles. That's, that's the whole reason. Um, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Don't they're they're not in clan battles right now for that reason. I think too many people would leave the game if you put it in clan battles because clan battles is literally competitive, and then in ranked you should remove them as well because that is more of a competitive mode, uh, right? The randoms thing is make randoms different modes where you can allow people to play just like in Call of Duty. If you want to play Battle Royale, if you want to play Domination, if you want to play uh, just Team Deathmatch, you can do that. You can select it. Don't force a player to en engage into a game where you can't counter this uh, this particular weapon system because you have no counter methods to it other than r driving right over it almost to the same idea of ramming a ship. I have to drive over the destroyer player to d do engage with depth charges. Depth charge in a surface warfare game is boring and is not fun. It's not helpful. And that's my, my understanding of that if you want to run a company. But, oh, by the way, if you do that, nobody will play submarines because nobody would want to play against submarines. It's no fun. It's like me in a tank saying, I would like to go play up against an A-10 tank buster. It makes no sense. Let me pick a mode where I get to go play against the Apache gunship and an M1 Abrams tank. It doesn't seem very fun for me. Uh, you can play that in Battlefield 2042 if you want. Uh, that's fun if you're going to do that kind of mode, but uh, that that is a first-person shooter game. For this, this is strategy-based surface warfare artillery action game. Artillery is the key word here. You're not doing that with submarines, and you're not doing that with airplanes and uh, carriers. I digress. I know it sounds like a little bit more of a negative griping kind of thing. Uh, this is more about a constructive uh, I, a criticism about the, where the game's heading. And if you were a, a, a designer and a, a, I would say an accounting area of the game, uh, if you're literally the financial officer of the game, you're going to have to look at your revenue is going to go down if you just keep going down this path of let's seclude the player base and not add any value to the game. You're adding devalue to the game or you're devaluing, I'm sorry, <laughs> you're devaluing the game uh, because you're adding things that would not make sense to a, a game that is based on a certain characteristic. So I, I digress. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I like having discussion. It's fun. It's engaging. Um, I'm glad that sometimes there is these things that we have to discuss about. Otherwise, it'd be kind of just, hey, let's go out and shoot ships, which is what it should be. But it seems like Wargaming likes to add drama to anything. So as always, hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, like, subscribe, button below. Appreciate all the support. As always, say hi when you see me out there, and take care. Cheers.